Hi, my name is Samira and today I'm going to show you how to transform a Confluence wiki into a powerful social intranet with Lynchpin. In every section today we are going to look at the configuration, but as Lynchpin also has very powerful personalization options, I'm also going to show you how to personalize the internet experience for your users. As you can imagine, Lynchpin has become more and more powerful since our last DIY guide in 2019. Therefore, I can show you every possible configuration in detail today. So make sure to check out the description below or just reach out to us if you're missing something. So for today, I prepared a blank Confluence site. There are no marketplace apps installed yet. All we have is some spaces, some pages and some blog posts. To transform Confluence into a social intranet, we need to download the Lynchpin Intranet Suite app from the marketplace and install it. So for that, we go to the Confluence administration, head to Find New Apps and search for the Lynchpin Intranet Suite. For this demo, I already bought a license, so all I need to do is install it. After the app is installed, we click on the logo to go back to the dashboard and we will see that there is no difference visible yet. That is because we need to do an extra step, meaning we need to enable Lynchpin theme. For that, we need to go back to the Confluence administration, search for look and feel, click on themes and enable the Lynchpin theme. Now, when we get back to the dashboard again, we will see our updated Lynchpin theme. This is where we'll start with the actual configuration now and configure the theme to match a corporate design. In order to do that, we click on the settings icon, look for theme and we are now in the Lynchpin theme configuration. I like to open up a second tab so I can check right away what changes I've just made. Let's start with the style of the dashboard. We can now choose if we would rather use the default Confluence dashboard with the sidebar and the activity stream, or we can choose the Lynchpin dashboard, which disables the sidebar and the activity stream and gives us more options in designing our dashboard. We can see that the welcome message is all over our dashboard. We can now use the usual Confluence editor and put every content we like onto our new dashboard. We just got redirected to the global templates and blueprint site in the administration. That is because we just edited the default welcome message. So whenever you want to edit the dashboard, you'll have to come back to the system template right here, click on edit and make further changes as you like. To get a jump start on a theming that fits our corporate design, we can use Lynchpin's theming wizard. We just upload our logo and the wizard will analyze the primary and secondary colors used in it and apply them to the Lynchpin theme. We have to confirm that we know we are overriding the current theming. And there we go. In Lynchpin, there are almost no limits to which buttons or elements you can theme. You can, for example, choose the background of your dashboard or even upload a background image. If we just go through our configuration real quick, we see that the colors of our logo were applied. Let's check out what our dashboard looks like now. We can see our logo here in the upper left corner. You can easily change that if you prefer to have it on the right side. Our header is now way bigger than in Confluence and overall we can see that the colors have changed from the default blue and now match our corporate design. Of course we can edit every configuration individually too. So if I for example change the color of the header icons and click on save, it appears on the dashboard right away. Also, we have an advanced section, which allows you to add CSS and JavaScript if you would like to make further changes. Before we start configuring the menu, I would like to quickly show you another nice feature that's part of the theming. In the theme administration, you can customize your login screen. We have a default linchpin image here right now, but let's replace it with a better fit for our company. Therefore, we choose an image, upload it, and we can already see a preview of it here on the right side. Let's also add a welcome message like welcome on board. 
So to see what this actually looks like now, we need to log out. And there we have our image in the background and our welcome message. All right, now let's log in again and configure our navigation menu. You can see that we don't have one right now and that is because we haven't created one yet. To start, all we have to do is go back to settings and go to the menu section. Here we can just start adding different items. Our company has different branches and every branch has their own spaces. So we'll just go ahead and add our headquarter in Miami and we will also add a link to the Miami space. It is important to link an existing space or page or an external link to a menu item. If we don't, the item won't be displayed in the navigation menu. If you want to add an item without a link, you add a category item instead of a main menu item. Of course, we can also add sub items to our main menu items. Let's add the Miami events, for example. So I have just finished configuring our menu. As you can see, I've added several main menu items and sub menu items. We can also change their order by just dragging and dropping them wherever we like. I would advise you to keep it simple here and don't add too many menu items as this can become very overwhelming. I also added both our locations here, Miami and Wiesbaden. Keep that in mind, we will get back to that when we start configuring our user profiles. So if I click on save, the configuration will be saved, but it's not published yet. And this is actually really helpful. If you have many different locations, the menu configuration can get fairly complex. So if you're making bigger changes to the menu and you don't want to confuse your users with a menu you haven't completed yet, you can just come back and finish your configuration later. All right, I just published our menu and as you can see, not all menu items I created are visible here yet. That is because we haven't configured our user profiles and the personalization options that come with that yet. So let's do this. We'll take a look at the user profiles first. Every user who has an account has a user profile and can edit it. As the default Confluence profile fields are not sufficient for our intranet use case, we are going to create new profile fields. In order to do that, we go to Settings, then to User Profiles, and here we are in the Profile Editor. Here you can see our default profile fields. As they are delivered by Confluence, you cannot delete them, but if you like, you could rename them. Let's add a new profile field where we ask our users which languages they speak. Luckily, there's already a field type called language select, so we don't have to add every language one by one ourselves. You can make a field mandatory or add a help text for your users, which will be displayed next to the profile field. Not only is it possible to let your users fill out their profile, you can, for example, also add an Active Directory, which fills out certain profile fields automatically. For the language field, we'll leave it at User Input and click on Save. So if we go back to my user profile now and go into the Edit mode, you will see that we can now select the languages I speak. Let's say I speak English and German, Click on save and now the selected values are displayed in my user profile. In the same way, we can now go ahead and edit or create more profile fields. All right, I have now created and renamed some more profile fields as you can see here in the editor. I could now fill them out in my profile. Going back to my user profile, there's one more feature I would like to show you, the header. Here we can upload an image we would like to use as our header graphic. This is just a nice feature that lets users personalize their profile a little bit more. The cool thing about the user profiles is that the values can not only be displayed in your profile, but you can also use them for our powerful expert search. I asked my colleagues to fill out their profile too. So now let's see what we can do with that. Our people directory allows you to get an overview of all users in your intranet. You can either choose between a tile or a list layout. 
A very useful feature that our people directory offers is the expert search. You can search for users and add additional filters to the search to find the right person based on the information in his or her profile. Let's see how you can configure these filters. On the people directory in the administration, new filters can be added. Let's add filters for location, languages and type of skipper license. Their order can easily be changed by just dragging and dropping them. We'll click on save and the changes are applied to the people directory right away. Also, here we can configure which columns should be displayed in a list view. We'll add languages, location and type of skipper license here as well. Their order can too be changed by drag and drop. We'll save our changes and now let's have a look at how to use the filters. Back in the people directory, we can now search for a German speaking colleague located in Miami who has a motorboat license. As you can see, the list updates automatically and we found a colleague who matches all our requirements. We can also add contacts to our favorites and easily access them at any time from the sidebar. Here in the sidebar, we can also search for users not only by their name, but also by values from their profile. For example, we would like to see all colleagues who speak French. Click on search and here we get a list of all colleagues who have indicated in their profile that they speak French. Org charts are a great way to visualize hierarchies within your company. They are generated and updated automatically based on the information in the user profiles. For org charts to work, we first have to activate them in the administration. Next, we choose which profile field holds the information about the superior. Therefore, each user profile needs at least one profile field of the type user select. We can define one or more users to be top position in order to represent different organizational structures. We will choose our CEO here. The org chart can be found in your profile as well as in the people directory. We'll start in our profile where we'll click on the org chart tab. The org chart here in my profile is focused on me, so I can see my superior here, people on the same hierarchy next to me and people from the department I'm in charge of below me. Next, let's have a look at the org chart in the people directory. Here you can choose how many levels you want to see and you can also adjust the zoom. Another way to display hierarchies within your company are the structural charts. They also have to be activated in the administration first. Next, we'll go ahead and add our company name, click on save and now we can start adding our departments. Let's say, for example, the IT department. We'll also have to choose the profile field where the department is stored. Click on save and we'll add another one, the HR department. We can also link to an existing space here. Choose the profile field again and click on save. In the same way, all departments can now be added to the structural chart. It is also possible to add child nodes to your departments. In IT, this could be, for example, a first and a second level support. Other than the org charts, the structural charts cannot be found in your profile, but only in the people directory. Structural charts are more department centered than people centered. That's why you can also hide the users here if you just want to see all your departments and how they are structured. Finally, I would like to go over some user macros that come with Lynchpin user profiles. We'll start with our profile macro. If you would like to show contact details or other profile information of a user on a specific page, you can use the profile macro. Just choose a user and define the profile information you would like to display. You can decide for each inserted macro what information should be shown. If you would like to change the default values, you can do so in the administration. Another way to display a user on a specific page is the content responsibility macro. 
This allows us to let other users know who is responsible for the content in this space or on this page. Let's save our changes so far and take a look at them. So here we have our profile macro on the left side and the content responsibility macro on the right side. When we now navigate to the profile, we can see the content responsibilities here. This can help your users to keep track of their pages and you can avoid outdated content in your wiki. Next up, we have the customized user list. This has the same functionality as the expert search in the people directory. Let's say we want to see everyone who has a motorboat license and speaks English. And the columns we want to see in the list are the email address and the location. Now, if I click on refresh, we will see a preview of the macro and therefore all people that match the filter criteria. This macro is also perfect for displaying upcoming birthdays or anniversaries. Additionally, it is possible to add a user search to our page. Let's add the custom user search macro next to our list. And if no configuration is added, we can search any user in our system. Of course, we can restrict the search results to a certain user group, define profile fields to search and much more to narrow down the results. For now, we'll leave it as it is and take a look at our macros. So here we have the custom user list on the left side and the search on the right side. Same as in the sidebar, we can search for any profile value here. For example, we could search for everyone speaking French. I'm sure you remember the org chart and structure chart we configured earlier. They are both also available as macros. Let's start with the org chart. Here we have to choose the supervisor that should be at the top of this org chart. Click on insert and we'll add the structure macro below. The configuration is somewhat different from the org chart macro. Instead of a supervisor, you choose your company or department that should be at the top of this chart. Now, when we publish our page, we have both our charts right here. If we click on a chart, it enlarges and we have the same functionality we already know from the people directory. Now that we configured the user profiles, we get to use the information for personalization. You may have already noticed that our navigation menu has changed compared to the beginning of this guide. So let's have a look. We can see that we have three menu items here. Wiesbaden, Wiki and Corporate News. That is because I have Wiesbaden set as my location in my profile. Let's go to my profile and change the location to Miami. After we saved our changes, we can already see here on the top that the first main menu item is now Miami. This is based on the navigation menu I configured earlier, which requires the menu personalization feature. Let's take a look at that. We go back to the menu configuration. On the second tab, we find the personalization feature. This is where we get to choose profile fields, which we want to use for personalization. As you can see, I set location as the primary attribute here, which allows us to customize the navigation menu based on the values in the user profiles. We can choose up to three attributes here. Let's add department as the secondary attribute. After we save the attributes, we go back to the menu structure configuration. There's a new column department here now. I am in the IT department, so let's add another main menu item only me and my team can see. I'll call it IT, add a link to our space, and of course also our department. Save and publish the configuration. And when we go back to the dashboard now, we can see the menu item IT right here. If we go to my profile and change the department to marketing, you can see that the menu item disappeared again. Well, our internet already looks really cool by now. As you may remember from the start of this guide, we already had some content in our Confluence. Let's put some of it on our dashboard. In order to do that, we just go ahead and edit the welcome message again. We'll delete everything on this page for a fresh start and search for the cover stories macro, which displays all blog posts in the tile layout. 
For now, let's leave the configuration as it is and take a look at what we just changed. I'll insert it and save the page. When we go back to the dashboard again, we can see the four most recent blog posts created in Confluence here in our macro. If we click on a post, we will see that it's just a regular Confluence layout here and that we are in the blog section of this space. Let's go ahead and edit this blog post. So as you can see, we also have the regular Confluence editor here, but what Lynchpin brings is this panel on the very top of the page. This allows us to add additional information. Let me walk you through this panel real quick. You can set a publication on expiration date and you can highlight the news by making it stick to the first tile of our cover stories macro, for instance. You can also add categories and labels as well as a kicker and a lead paragraph. So let's add this is a kicker and this is a lead paragraph here. Last but not least, a really cool feature are the news teaser options. We can, for example, choose a cover image, a video or a quotation that fits to our blog post. We will choose an image for our news, save the additional information and publish the blog post. Let's go back to the dashboard and find out what it looks like now. We see our teaser image here, our kicker, as well as our lead paragraph. If you embed the cover stories macro without doing any configuration, all blog posts in your Confluence will be displayed. Obviously, you can change and personalize that by configuring the cover stories macro. Back in the editor, we will now go ahead and configure the macro. As you can see, first thing you can do is choose from different layouts. For now, we'll leave it as it is with the four tiles. Now we are going to predefine the news channels that will be displayed in the macro. For example, we can say that in the first and second tile, only news from the space corporate should be displayed. In the third tile, we'll display news from the space Miami. And in the fourth tile, we'll display news from the space HR. We'll click on insert and save the page. Back on the dashboard, we can now see that the first two blog posts are from the space corporate, the third is from Miami and the fourth is from HR. The macro updates itself dynamically and always shows the latest news from the selected spaces. Every user who logs into this site will see the same blog posts here. Obviously, you can also personalize the news people get to see, for example, based on their location. First, we go into the configuration of the news and choose personalization. Similar to the personalization of the navigation menu, we can choose up to three attributes here. We'll choose location and save our changes. Next, we need to create a new news section. We'll call it location-based news. And here we can now choose the spaces and locations we want to use for the personalization. Once we've done that, we need to let the cover stories macro on the dashboard know that instead of different spaces, it must now show the location-based news we have just created. We will open the edit mode of our dashboard again and change the configuration of the cover stories macro. Let's leave the first two tiles with news from the space corporate and change the third to news sections. And here we choose location-based news. Now, once we open our dashboard again, we see that the third tile now displays news from the space that I assigned to the location Miami. Let's switch locations to see if our personalization works. For that, we navigate to our user profile, click on edit and change the location to Wiesbaden. Now we can already see that the menu has changed back to Wiesbaden and on our dashboard we can see that the news tile shows news from Wiesbaden instead of Miami now. With that configuration, it is possible to target information to a specific user group easily. It can not only apply to locations, but also to departments or any other profile field. Another way to display news is the corporate newsfeed. Similar to the cover stories, we can add this macro here on our dashboard or on any other Confluence page. Instead of spaces or news sections, we will use news categories here. Other than labels, categories are set by an administrator and can't be defined by the users. 
Let's choose the category Jobs here. Back on our dashboard, we see that it already displays two news that were assigned that category. Instead of the prominent cover stories, we get a more compact look of our news here. Let's have a look at the administration. Next to new sections, we can find categories. Here we can add, rename, translate or delete news categories. Once we have created a category, it can be added to any existing or new blog post through the additional information panel I showed you in the beginning of this section. It is also possible to let users decide which news they want to see on their dashboard. Therefore, we use the personal newsfeed macro. The configuration is similar to the one of the corporate newsfeed macro, but we can't define the source here. The users themselves subscribe to spaces they would like to follow and these news are then displayed here. If we haven't subscribed to any spaces yet, the display will be empty. Each user can click on subscribe to news and add any space they are interested in. To avoid this empty state in the beginning, an administrator can set default and obligatory subscriptions for each user group in the administration. To see all news available in our Confluence, we navigate to the News Hub. Here we can search for news, see our subscriptions and use filters to, for example, display news of a specific space. To configure these filters, we go back to the administration. Under Enterprise News, we click on Configuration and in the News Hub section, we can now configure these filters. Here we can add filters like date range, spaces, labels or news categories. Back in the News Hub, we now have the filter we just added available. One very helpful functionality we haven't talked about yet is the News Workflow. I navigated to the space corporate and we will now access the permissions of this space and go to the tab News Workflow. Let's pretend I am the only person who is allowed to publish news in this space. But there are a few authors who can still write and edit the news for and with me. These people are part of my content team. They can not publish any posts in this space, but they will see and be able to edit each other's drafts. Now let's see if there are any posts for approval. Once one of the authors sends a blog post for approval, I will be notified via my notification sender here on top. Anyhow, we can see all scheduled posts or posts that are awaiting approval if we go to my profile and add to a new scheduling overview. We can just click on one of the posts here and approve the changes or reject it and send it back to the author. With the events feature, you can easily inform and invite your colleagues to upcoming events in your company. Let's have a look. Therefore, we go to the event hub and we'll see that there are no events planned yet. We'll go ahead and create an event. We'll call it Christmas party and choose a date and a time. To make our event more appealing, we can also add an image. We can either upload one or we can use our Unsplash integration. This has to be activated once in the administration. Here we'll just search for Christmas, choose the image we like best and it appears right here in the preview. If we like, we can also add a location and a description. But for now, let's leave it as it is and save our event. It is immediately published in the event hub where we can now sign up see a participants list and can also invite other colleagues to it too. The dot menu offers additional functions such as adding the event to our calendar or an export of the participants list. Also, we can always go ahead and make changes to our event. When we go to the options of our event, there's even more we can configure. You could, for example, add an event category, link to a page that holds the agenda, limit the number of participants and much more. As I just mentioned, it is possible to add categories to events. Therefore, we just go to the events section within the administration and add some categories. 
I have just created some more events and assigned them categories. We can now filter them by clicking on the corresponding category in the left sidebar. If you want to display one or more of your events on your dashboard, you can do so by embedding one of our event macros. I'll show you how to do that. We can either display a single event, add an event calendar or an event list. Let's go through them one by one. The event macro displays just a single event. We'll choose to display our Christmas party here and insert it. We'll also insert the event calendar and the event list macro and do no further configuration just now. We'll go ahead and save this page and I'll show you what it looks like once it's published. So on the left side, we can see our Christmas party event. The event calendar gives us an overview of this month's events. Of course, we can browse past and future events too. Next to the event calendar, we added the event list macro, which shows all our events in chronological order in list view. Finally, I would like to show you the further configurations you can make when using the event calendar and the event list. Therefore, I went to edit mode again. We'll click on the event calendar macro and edit it. Here we can choose a specific space or a specific category we want our events to be displayed from. For the calendar, we'll choose the category training to be displayed. The configuration of the event list macro works just the same. But let's say here we want to see all events from the category party. Back on the dashboard, we see the trainings in the event calendar and the parties in the event list. To encourage your users to communicate within your intranet, you can use our microblogging feature. This is pretty similar to, for example, the Facebook or Twitter timeline. We'll start off at the microblog hub and we can see that that is not configured yet. Every microblog timeline is connected to a confluence space and within the spaces we can add topics. It is essential to create topics within one or more spaces first thing. Otherwise, you can't create microblog posts. So we'll go ahead and do this here for our space Wiesbaden. We'll add a topic called sailing and create another topic called training. When we go back to the microblog hub, we see that we are now able to create a microblog post. After we selected a topic, we add our text and click on post it. All users can now interact with my post by liking it or replying to it. By posting more and more messages, our timeline continues to grow. The global microblog timeline consists of all different topics from different spaces. That being said, you can add a microblog timeline to a specific space and only display the posts that concern your team or topic. If you are working in a restricted space, only members of this space will be able to see these posts in that specific space and on their global timeline. Of course, we can embed the global microblog timeline onto our dashboard too. We therefore use the microblog timeline macro. Now, every post from every space that is visible to me will be displayed here. It is possible that users will see different content here based on their access to certain spaces. Another cool use case is embedding the microblog timeline into a space. For example, we can add the macro to our corporate space and choose to only display microblog posts from this space here. For apps and websites you use on a daily basis, we developed the Launchpad feature. This allows you to access the most important links directly from your dashboard. In Lynchpin, an app is a web link to a tool or a page you are using within your company. As you can see, there are no apps yet in the Launchpad Hub. So let's visit the administration and create some apps. So for example, let's add Amazon with Amazon.com used for shopping. You can enter a contact so users know who to reach out to if they have questions about the link. Also, it is possible to add labels and categories. I haven't configured those yet, but it works just the same way as with the news or events. We can also configure the visibility of apps. You can either make the app visible to all users or use the personalization features. 
So for example, you could configure that a certain app is only visible to the marketing team. You can also make specific apps mandatory. For example, the time tracking app should be visible for everyone and no one gets to unsubscribe from that. So I just created some more apps. And back in the Launchpad Hub, we have our own little link library here right now. I already made our website and our time tracker mandatory, but we can also add other apps to our favorites. As soon as we do that, they become visible in the sidebar in the My Apps section and are then quickly accessible from anywhere, anytime. Another cool feature of Lynchpin is our Language Manager. It connects pages with the same content in different languages. This way, users can easily find a translation if it's available. In the Space Knowledge Base, we open Space Tools and click on Manage Languages. We know that all pages in this space are in English, so we can set the default language for this space to English. Below, we see an overview of all available pages and blog posts that we can connect. Let's start with the home page of the Knowledge Base. We will connect it to this page here, which is the equivalent of the German Knowledge Base, and set the language to German. We can now do this for all pages in this space. So I just connected all our pages and blog posts available to their German equivalent. Back to a page in our English knowledge base, we have a new dropdown on top of the page where we can switch to the same page in German. Of course, this also works the other way around. Thanks a lot for watching this guide. I hope I could help you set up your Lynchpin intranet. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are many more features we didn't cover in this video. If you want to learn more, feel free to take a look at our documentation. The link is in the description below. Also, we are of course happy to help if you have any questions. Bye for now!